Hello and welcome back to Sailing Catalpa. This week we're in the boatyard fixing up our sailboat home, so stay tuned to see what we get up to. We're an Australian family that set off on an adventure of a lifetime. We hope these little videos make you smile and inspire you to chase your dreams. Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. All right guys, we've got our Raycor filters here. Housings aren't too bad, they're getting a bit old, but one thing that is completely gone, it is absolutely shot, is our pressure gauge there, our vacuum pressure gauge. So we've got this one off Amazon. Let's whack this on, see how we go. I don't really need it, but it's there so and it's broken, so I'm just gonna replace it. It's always handy to know what's going on. Obviously, if you get a lot of pressure there, it's showing you that you've got dirty filters. But generally, a visual is good enough. Whoa, we've got diesel leaking out. Screw our new one back on. Okay. Tighten him up. Wasn't sure if this was going to fit. It's actually a little bit bigger than the, the original one. That's all right. We do have new fuel lines. We don't have them at the moment, but just in case we don't get them in time, I'm just going to mount this all back on. It's got the new gauge on there. There's our old gauge. Not a break or one, it's probably 30 years old. Who knows? That one's gone in the bin. Anyway, there's the new gauge. I'll give that a little adjustment and we'll call that done. We are in the engine bay. As you know, we have our Pagario generator sitting here, 9 kVA. Our box and our big mess of wires is up there, which is going to have to all be, um, have a home and the whole lot needs to be redone really. That was just a rough wiring just to see that everything worked, which it did. I found a nice little spot down here next to our main engine and that's where our Vetus exhaust water lock will be. So that will go down there. Pretty much where this box is sitting, I'm thinking maybe where our other component to the Pagario sits. And that's our big inverter box. And only because it's so heavy, I want to try and keep the weight in the center of the boat. So it's not ideal. It is going to confine this space a little bit, but I can work with that. That's fine. I may just, whatever design I do here, I may just allow a little bit of extra cable stuff. I did need to get access to the engine. I can just easily move it out of the road. I haven't actually checked yet. That's crazy. And that's the in here. So these should be able to turn. Sorry for the roughness. Well, I can't turn it at the moment, but that's going to be pointing up and hopefully I don't know if I've got to remove or not. Ah, oh, nice. Our exhaust box is going to sit right down there. It's nice and low, so it won't allow water to backflow into our generator, which can be a problem in lots of boats. And then we've got a long run of exhaust line to get to the back of the boat, which we don't have yet. I'm just trying to configure where all these components are going to go. The generator did need a little bit of love, as you know, it had the issue where someone had tampered with the injectors and left them loose and that was obviously bleeding fuel into our oil and causing the oil level to rise and causing all sorts of problems and that is why our previous owners of this generator gave up on it due to someone's uh, inexperience to fix the engine correctly. Um, lucky enough I was able to find what was wrong with it it's only got a thousand hours on it. A few of the components that were missing was the water lock down there. Uh, obviously we've got to get exhaust line, fuel line, fuel filter which will be over here. I've mounted it, it's not plumbed up yet. And there's our fuel filters for the uh, main engine and then that will be our generator one. Pretty much all we've got to do is get this box mounted here, which is our inverter box. Gen set's fine. We've got to put on a uh, temperature switch, which was missing. A uh, few hoses, so our water intake, our fuel line uh, in and return. Obviously a lot of cables and the one thing that's not in here is the converter box, because this is 240 volts and we will run a converter box, which the boat now will have 240 and 110. So, got the best of both worlds. Anyway, I'm gonna uh, stop flapping my gums and we'll see what we come up with. I'm sorta of gonna make this up as I go, just however things and components fit neatly. Spend a little bit of time on this today and see what we come up with. As you can see, the wiring is just a big mess. 
And that's the other wiring, what I've got to work with. Surprise, there's not a bird nesting up there because it is a bird's nest of wires. But that's my day today. So I'm going to play around in here and just try and get a little bit more organized. Sarah's away at the moment, so it's giving me a little bit of time to think about how we're going to do this. I'm just having a quick look at our instructions. Our water box is down there. It says that if I've got 15 centimeters from the water line to our exhaust outlet, I don't need a loop in here. But I think my water line, so I'm gonna have to take some measurements, it's very close. My water line on the engine is just at a guess, it's probably around here. So it's probably right on the borderline of whether I need to install a vented loop. So if it's too close, I may just do it. The water line in my sea chest is about there. So coming across, it's about there. Oh, look, I tell you what, it's probably right on the line. So I don't know, I think it may pay to put a vented loop in there so I don't flood the engine. What's an extra vented loop? So we don't flood our engine, hey? Been a week, so now it's time to go pick up mum. Gotta go and pick the mama up. Darling, turn around. Turn around, yeah. Hello. got back and we are driving back to Porto Penasco. The border closes in like two hours. We had plenty of time but we just got to about 20 minutes from the border and <laughs> the police just pulled us over and told us that uh, the road is closed. Something's happened and there's We're an waiting investigation. waiting on a chopper and yeah an investigation to take place. So there must have been some Pretty big accident or something they're not saying. They're yeah. not they wouldn't tell us what it was. Yeah. I said accident, they said yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, it was definitely something more than an accident. They got choppers and an investigation going on. Yeah. But the problem is we're about two hours from Phoenix. An hour. So we don't know what we're gonna do tonight. I think there's a caravan park And we're supposed to have the car back. And we were on time to get the car back. <laughs> but now we are in the desert with nowhere to go. <laughs> in the dark. <laughs> so we're out to get dark. All the police are back there, turning everybody around. Shit, we're gonna have to sleep in the car again. Again. <laughs> 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 the last time we did that though, the car was bigger. Uh, yeah, this one's go. too small, I'm not doing that. You did want to be in Phoenix for another day. Uh, oh, Dad, this was you, you put in the universe. We've, not to mention, We've got like mints in the back, we've got oh, cold no, foods, no. we've got our shopping. Do, do. Um, so... Oh, look at all these cars, there's like four cars. Alright, well this is a pain. Wait, where are those other cars going? Into that park. Oh, are we just going to sleep in there? Um, alright. Well, we're just going to have to work out what we're going to do. Work out where we are, there's no internet where we are right now. It's a lovely sunset in the desert, we'll work out what we're going to do and then I don't get to go home tonight. <laughs> We ended up driving about two and a half hours back to Phoenix and got a motel for the night and then had an extra day to get a few more things we needed. The road was reopened and we drove four hours back to Rocky Point. Springtime in the desert means pretty flowers so we stopped and mum picked up some flowers to bring back to Catalpa. Alright guys, today doing a bit of welding but it's not stainless steel welding, it's steel because we do like stainless steel on a boat, but it is in the engine bay, still strong. I'm gonna give it a coat of paint. I'm sure it'll last 50 years. It'll probably outlive me. Anyway, what I need is a bracket for the uh, inverter for the generator and on the back side the converter. So I'm just gonna cut a few pieces up and um, I'll show you what I come up with. I've just gone to Phoenix, went into the uh, dollar per pound bin, steel shop is what I think it was called. And they have a big area which is all their offcuts for a dollar a pound. So I thought I'll make use of the dollar a pound and I'll knock myself up a little bracket.
It was then time to get the Eastwood TIG welder out. Okay guys, last night we welded up a frame for our inverter box and our step down box. I'm just about to take it downstairs, drill some holes, spray it up, but it's going to, apart from this big bundle of bird's nest there, uh, it's probably easy to show you out here, this is our, our inverter for the generator, and then I'm going to move this off, but and on the back side of it, heavy bit of kit is our step down so that will take it from our inverter which is 230 volts it steps down the 240 runs it into this and then i can run it into our system which is 120. i've made this frame up it bolts to the floor in there it's next to the sea chest here it's sort of a center the load i was going to have it to the side of the boat but i've tried to pull these units over to the middle because they are quite heavy yeah i'll take this down draw some holes spray it up show what it looks like in there We've got our frame done and painted and it's about to go in the engine bay. It's high and dry, it's right next to the inverter so there'll be very little voltage drop and it's a short run to tie into our main 2 or 110 circuit. It is a 9000i Pagaro which I believe is a 10 kVA generator. Plenty of power there, we won't need all of that. I'm going to give you a quick little demonstration here of what's going to go on and we'll see it later in the room. But anyway, I didn't actually use the brackets that were provided by Victron because it was just a flimsy little bracket anyway. So these are rock solid. If I can get an assistant. All right, Bella's gonna hold this, guys, and I'll give you a bit of an idea on what it's gonna look like. It could take a minute. Well, on this side's gonna be the 240 volt, and it's gonna come into here and make it 110. So we're gonna have two separate legs of 110 in this case. One's gonna go to our 3000 watt uh, Victron inverter, and the other one's gonna run to our main circuit, which has got the, or our circuit that has the air cons on it. And we will put a, in between these two, we'll put a couple of outlets. So if we do need to, for instance, uh, wanna run 240, I can plug in a welder, say for instance, dive compressor washing machine, or we can run this, which is running through the Victron inverter, and that gives us our 110. So really, we've got the best of both worlds. We've got the both voltages, and uh, it's a pretty simple setup. Oh, it's a bit snug. But nice and tight is how we like it. Hopefully, come up higher. I haven't tried this yet. Up a little bit. There's one. I'll just get a little nut on the end there so it doesn't drop. On one side, we have our step down auto transformer. But this one here is what comes out of our generator. And our generator is a three phase motor, comes into this inverter and brings it to 240 volts. Pretty simple. Get yourself an Eastwood welder like I did and uh, someone like Gary in the boatyard with 30 years experience and you'll learn how to weld within two weeks. I'll keep you up to date. I've still got more welding jobs to go and I think I've found another teacher. So I've lost Gary. Gary's left the, left the yard. He's out cruising now. But what do you do when someone's not there? You go online. So I'll show you who I've found and who I'm going to be working with online to learn a little bit more about um, stainless steel welding, aluminium welding, the Eastwood setup and make it work while we cruise along and get all of our little jobs out of the road. It's all right, it's just four holes I gotta drill. That's 50, so it's 50 inches, I think it's 49 and a half the ceiling. 
I don't know if I need more room over that anyway. I'll see. It's alright, it's only four holes. installed 95% of the generator. Uh, I've run two fuel lines in, a in and a return. I've just done a temporary install for the raw water. I've just got to finish plumbing that up. I did that just to run the engine. So, and I've done a temporary exhaust just out through our seacock. So we don't have the exhaust line yet that runs to the back of the boat. And we have the exhaust box. Uh, we have the outlet at the back of the boat, so we really just need the exhaust hose. Thanks to Dakota Lithium, we have a start battery for our generator. These little bad boys are super light. They're only little battery. They're 25 amp hour, 12 volt, but they pack a lot of punch. They've got... Uh, what do they got? 300 cca, which is cold cranking amps, which is sufficient for this. And um, we're going to mount this one behind here and call that done for our start side of things for our generator. We wired up to our inverter box that is part of the generator and it powered up. It's all working perfect. There's one little drip under the seawater pump here. I put a new impeller in, but it's just got a little drip, which hence why I painted this and I could tell there's a little bit of rust on the housing there. So it's just been left dripping over time, but I'll fix that. It's not a big one, but while we're here and playing around with it, I'll put a kit on there. So I just want to get this right in the first go. They're not a hard job. You just got to take your time and seat the seals nicely. Got it all going. It runs bloody beautifully. It's nice and quiet, obviously with the cover and everything on. I'm going to mount the controller in the galley just opposite our main motherboard there. That's all temporarily wired up now. I've just got to mount that and finish that off. And uh, yeah, it's been a little bit of playing around with it, but for a carton of beer to have a 10 kVA generator, I did price these up. They're about $14,000, so we probably wouldn't have bought one if we didn't get one for a carton of beer. Guys, so thanks for watching. We really appreciate it, and we also appreciate everyone that has helped and contributed to where we are at this stage, and we're getting close to getting back in the water, so... It's exciting times ahead, hopefully, so not far now, and we'll be splashing. So thanks again, guys. Stay tuned. See you in the next one.